To ask the question, are computers smart, seems pretty absurd on the face of it. Computers are able to do tens of thousands of calculations every second, create entire physical worlds, and store and organize tens of millions of words worth of information. The average computer must be far smarter than the average human brain, right? You might have noticed that sometimes your computer or smartphone will give you a lot of trouble when you're trying to get them to do something very simple. Maybe autocorrect changes something to a word you didn't intend, or images are grouped in ways that make them look worse, or Google image search isn't able to recognize what a simple picture is. So how is something that's so intelligent able to make such simple mistakes that even a five-year-old wouldn't make? Well, it's because, believe it or not, computers are actually really bad at logic. Again, that statement probably sounds pretty absurd. For the past century, science fiction has explored the idea that AI and supercomputers would be entirely logical. But this trope isn't really because computers are good at logic, it's simply that computers are not hindered by emotion. But that doesn't really make them good at logic. In fact, computers are really only good at two things when it comes down to it. Remembering numbers and doing math. Computers can do these two things amazingly well in really nothing else. Getting them to think or to make decisions requires a human being, also known as a programmer, to arrange its calculators in a way that makes certain results occur based on certain inputs. How do we get from the ability to do math to the ability to think? Well, it took a long time and a lot of very smart people. I have other videos on the specifics of how computers store and use information, but all you need to know for now is this. A computer's thoughts, when they're arranged by a programmer, are essentially just a really complicated flowchart. A huge maze of if-then statements referencing other if-then statements and flowing to other if-then statements. For example, if the left mouse button is pushed down, then check to see if the cursor is over an icon. If it is, then check to see if the control or the shift key is held down, it goes on and on. Every computer program is set up this way. It's just a whole ton of if-then statements. And this is accomplished by using something called logic gates, and I will make a video on these eventually, but for now, just keep in mind that this is how all of a computer's thoughts are arranged. It's for this reason that computers are only able to solve problems when they are clearly defined and specific. If the problem is broad or poorly defined, it really doesn't even know where to start. Getting a computer to understand the problem is just as important as getting it to solve the problem. Over the past century, thousands of really, really smart and creative people have arranged these flowcharts to operate in brilliant ways, which allows things like video games, simulations, and search programs to function. But understand that at the end, it all just comes down to this. And this is fundamentally different from how a human brain works. Take, for example, image recognition. You and probably anybody over the age of three years old can look at this video and easily point out where my hand is. A computer can't. It doesn't even know where to start, and it doesn't really even know what a hand is. We have to write one of those massive flowcharts of if-then statements to get it to look at the color of every single pixel of every frame and then compare them to other pixels to figure out where lines are and figure out which lines matter. We could teach the computer how to find lines based on where colors change along an edge. It still wouldn't understand why these lines are more significant than these lines. That's another thing we would have to explain to it. Let's look at another example. A human being could easily say how many columns are in this building. But a basic image recognition program would likely mistake the trees for being columns. Your mind isn't just looking for tall, thin, cylindrical objects, it's also using context. Your brain knows that this is a building, which is what makes these columns. It also knows what a tree is, which is why it knows that these things are trees and not columns. We would have to write all kinds of massive logic charts to let the computer know how to recognize trees and know to avoid them, and also how to recognize buildings and favor them. These are the things we take for granted in our brains that computers need to be painstakingly forced to do. Recognizing faces is another thing that computers have trouble with. Some really advanced programs with massive processing power have gotten pretty good at recognizing faces simply by identifying a nose and eyes and other things, just based on the shape and their relative position on a circular object. But they can be really easily fooled. A simple drawing of a face will fool these programs, 
but any human being can tell that it's not the real thing. Furthermore, if I put my hand in front of my eyes and mouth, you as a human being are gonna know exactly what I'm doing. I'm just covering my face. The computer is gonna have no idea where my face went. It doesn't have that context. Now let's look at an example with what computers do best, math. If I wrote a program to calculate somebody's average income by averaging their last five years of income, it could do that just fine. But what if this program is applied to somebody who's only been working for the past two years? A human being looking at this would see the first three years of zero income and intuitively know that the person wasn't working for these years and that they shouldn't be counted. But the computer program won't. It simply will do what it's programmed to do and include those three years, massively downweighting the average. The computer will not inherently find anything suspicious about the first three years all being zero income. It doesn't really care. It needs to be programmed to understand things like this specifically. We need to tell it, hey, look, if a year has zero income, do not factor it into the average. It's also interesting to look at games. Artificial intelligence programs have recently been beating chess masters and winning really complex games like StarCraft and Go, but that's mainly because these games do have a very strict set of rules. As I said earlier, computers do really well when a problem is well-defined and specific, if it has a really clear set of rules and parameters. If this piece is moved here and these pieces are here, then move this piece here. There are only so many possibilities to be considered, so a really complicated flowchart can satisfy the needs of the game quite well. But recognizing the world around us is a lot more complicated. All human beings can do it intuitively, but we don't really understand how we're doing it. We are our brains, but we don't really understand our brains. The amount of if-then conditions going on in your brain to do something as simple as catch a frisbee is absolutely astounding. And we can do it as just a casual hobby to relax. But breaking that process down into a bunch of if-then statements is something we really can't do. As a human, you inherently know so many different things about the world that a computer couldn't even begin to understand. Subjects like grammar, social norms, politics, economics, health, plants, space, feelings, philosophy, history, fiction, reality, and most importantly, activities like driving, walking, eating, breathing, socializing, and most amazing of all, learning. All of these things would require so much short-term memory, long-term memory, and processing power in a computer that it's comparatively astounding that a squishy little human brain can do it all. So in summary, computers are just tools. Brains are designed to think about the world and we developed the ability to do math based on that. While computers are just designed to do math and have been trained to do something that looks kind of like thinking. But there is a fundamental difference between the two, and most likely always will be.